As you guys already know, top of the month as always. Welcome to the Freedom Cage Podcast, where we lock into a free state of mind each and every day week on all DSB, of course. And to my right, I got my main guy, my ace, my left, my right as we, Sean, better known as the singing name on your socials. You know. And me, Penny, also known as King Cat, looking on these socials. But today, man. So listen, man, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, what, what is it? We just hit the beginning of fall. You know, um, we started to feel the weather coming in. You know, I mean, that official end of summer, kids back in school, all that good stuff, man. Um, perfect time, everybody, to get your FCP hoodie if you don't have it yet. You know, I mean, we got all kinds of styles, all kinds of colors. Make sure y'all hit up the FCP shop, get you a hoodie, start your fall off right. Um, or a quick chime in on the on 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 shop. If y'all need a color to match your wardrobe, Hit us up, man. We might make that happen for y'all if you're if you're a fan. If you're a fan. Big facts. <laughs> big facts. Big facts. We might ask you a couple questions about like the first ten episodes or something like that. But not like, crazy. Like, <laughs> quiz, quick pop quiz. Nothing crazy. <laughs> um. So other than that, brother, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good, man. Can't complain. Um. A little bit of a shuffle over at the workspace. I relocating offices this weekend slash week. So that's always fun, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, like like most things, uh, as much as you plan to plan uh, uh, in architecture, uh, we don't plan a little bit. It's like moving, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's uh, got their stuff packed up. It's like, all right, cool, we just can go over there. Like, yeah, we're taking these desks though. It's like, does your car fit these desks? Because my car don't fit these desks. Like, what you, what you mean we taking these desks? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I thought, uh-huh. I thought we were just gonna break them down. Oh, you want us to break them? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. If these, if these tables ain't, ain't working, man. <laughs> Very short story, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, movers yeah. will be here Friday. Movers will be here Friday to get all that shit, but I ain't dealing with it. All right. All right. Yeah. How was your week, well, though? Yeah, my week is good, man. I remember when we first had to move um, like from a, one office to another since 2015. Um, they just handed us a bunch of these like U- USPS bins and was just like, yep. That's your stuff. You know what I mean? Make sure you label it good. Uh, Don't forget anything, because once we leave, that's it. You know, there's no coming back. So I remember everybody just, you know, having to throw everything in there, make sure everything was labeled. You know, you had to help some people who just really just didn't get the gist of, you know, how to get their stuff in order. Um, But since then, uh, in our new building, all we've done is really change floors since 2015, twice. But other than that, Right now, thank God, no heavy moving on the work front, and hopefully mm-hmm. it stays that way for a while. Yeah, man. Um, I'm trying to pick. I'm trying to like pinpoint what's worse, like moving physically or like the or like the office move. Like you know, what I'm saying like you think of the <laughs> house is worse because there's more stuff, but but it's so hard to be productive because you had work trying to work, but you're moving at the same time. These emails is coming in in real time because they don't give a fuck that you're moving yeah. right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's like yeah, yeah. I heard y'all relocated offices. Listen. I'm going to need ABC. It's like, I don't even got Wi-Fi yet, man. Internet is still in between spaces. You got to give me some time. Give me some time. Yeah. I remember a while ago they said a, a hack for making sure that not only when you move, you don't have a bunch of stuff you got to go through, but even if you're just trying to do like efficient spring cleaning, throw a bunch of stuff that, you know, has been around for a while in a box, you know, stuff is somewhere mm-hmm. that you never really go. And if you never look for it, if it doesn't make the, you know, the fit check, it's, it's garbage, you know what go, I mean? <laughs> it's literally garbage. Don't even look at it. Don't even open that box because you open that box, you're going right down Pandora's box again and you'll never get rid of that stuff, man. Um, are you a hoarder at work? Do you find yourself holding on to papers longer than you need to? A little stickies or bullshit notes? Oh, negative. No. You? Mm, big hoarder. Big hoarder, <laughs> man. man <it's> like, <laughs> you know why? Because like every six months, like uh, there'll be a recall for something. It's like, oh, do you got the... The notes from ABC is like, it's not in the system. It's like, it's not? Hmm. Let me check the old database, <laughs> the box under <laughs> my desk. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I go through that, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Got it. They go, oh, I thought we didn't have it. Kenny has everything. You know what I'm saying? But um, <laughs> yeah, I got to, I got to, I got to, uh, I got to make, I got to part ways with my, with my heart and stuff this week. Yeah. A lot of shit going in the trash. Yeah, that's tough business, man. But you know, you hold on to stuff for situations just like yours, right? If you don't do that, everybody's asked out. So you know what I mean? you know what I mean? need that sometimes. Need that sometimes. Oh man. Um, I got another work question for you. If a male employee, right, 
he's out there. You know, you, ha- you guys talk as often as you need to as far as work is concerned. But if you notice your male employee singing a rather feminine song, like out loud, not like, you know, like, not like out in the shower loud, how, you know, how, we, how you might go crazy in the shower. But I'm just talking like humming louder than your normal humming tone to yourself. Like, I can hear you sing these words from my cubicle, mm-hmm. bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? And this wasn't no regular feminine song. It was Christina Aguilera's uh, Genie in a Bottle. He's like, I'm a genie. He's like, yo, neck moving, all kinds of shit. He's into it. No headphones, no nothing. He's going straight off memory. I'm assuming it's one of those, you know, you know, when the car, when you turn the car off, whatever's playing, it's kind of yeah for the next 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at him and I'm at a distance. He can't see me looking at him, but I'm looking at him. He's like, like doing all the lip work, looking, looking right into Outlook. You know what I'm saying? I'm just looking at him like, <laughs> nah, I'm going to let him cook. I'm let him cook because <laughs> if I stop his if I stop his, his sunshine at 9:22 a.m., it's gonna be weird for the whole day. Like you know what I'm saying? So I just like you know what? I'm gonna let this man cook. Hopefully he stops singing it after the next 15, 20 minutes. And he did. He he, he calmly like died down. But I was mm-hmm. nervous for a little bit. Like you ever caught a, a, a masculine man singing a, a feminine song super loud? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? You approach it? Do you let it ride? <laughs> oh, that that's definitely making social media. Like you just mm, officially became, you know what I mean? A really, really cool post for me, you know, like, because listen, I, I'm like you, I'm gonna let them cook, you know, at this age, um, you might catch me singing like a Maxwell joint, you know what I mean? Maybe an Alicia Keys joint, um, you know, just, hey, sometimes you're just in that mood. So, yeah. but, but if you want to be at work, like visibly, you know, with the mannerisms and everything, you're asking to be on social media to me. Like you want mm. people to see you, hear you. So people are gonna see you and hear you now. And thank you for the likes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> are, are, are co-workers on your social feed off limits or is that fair game? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of like things that you could put, you know, to like not make their likeness too crazy. <laughs> you okay. know what I mean? Uh, uh, so uh, you can you can make it really like safe for you know not them looking completely bad unless they're open to it some people don't care they're like go ahead post it i don't care it's at me <laughs> yeah <laughs> tag me all right, all right. funny funny okay yeah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah man um i let him cook i let him cook um i didn't even i didn't even bring it up later i was just like so christina aguilera he's like mm. i was like yeah nigga, i heard you you know what i'm saying but we're not gonna talk about it no more after this <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you know man. what if somebody is that happy to be sing, if a man is that happy to be singing Christina Aguilera at work openly, I'm happy for him. You know what right. I mean? Because not not too many people show up to the workplace genuinely happy. So when you see somebody genuinely happy, you only get two feelings. You're like, you know what? Good for you. You know what I mean? Because I come here sometimes, I don't feel that way. So if you're <laughs> at that level, that's good for you. But then sometimes you're like, if you don't shut your happy ass up. <laughs> or I got a meeting in five minutes and I can hear you, man. We all can hear you, bro. You are inconveniencing us. Absolutely. Oh, man. That's funny. Um, so this past weekend, man, um, uh, last week's live, I did mention, you know, it is Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, shout out to everybody celebrating. We kicked it off with two events. Uh, last Thursday, we did Latin dancing at our corporate headquarters. Actually, it was a really good turnout, and it almost happened by accident. Uh, we had a voter registration drive at my job on September 15th, and we had flyers for the Latin dancing event on the table. When we had cleaned up everything at the end, like we were handing out the flyers to some of the people that stopped by, but we left a couple flyers behind somehow. I didn't mm-hmm. notice it until I made my rounds towards the end of the day just to make sure that everything looked you know, good. So I left it there because, hey, listen, I don't need the flyers. I know when the event is. If somebody else gets it, fine. Turns out some people from other floors took them back to their floor like, yo, look at what they're doing here at corporate. We got to go. So when I tell you, there was probably about eight of us initially, people that we knew were coming, just there, music's playing, we're all talking. And then we see like 15 people start rolling in. And we're like, oh. Now, the faces look familiar because I walk through the floors every now and then. But they're like, oh, we didn't know about all these events that you guys put on. And we didn't know that the system has this stuff happening. So an old school tactic, you know, I had to dig into my Lee's Entertainment bag and handing out Mm -hmm. flyers and all of that. Um, An old school tactic brought in faces that we've never seen before. 
We've always been trying to find better ways to communicate what's going on in the system. You're talking about over 40,000 something employees, over eight different um, locations throughout the tri-state area. It's hard to let everybody know what you're doing. Um, nice. But th it, this was a really cool surprise for all of us, man. Really cool. What's up, man? Sounds good to not not only dig into your past or help you help you help your present, but when it's working towards the future, it's even better. Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying. So that's what's up, man. Have to do all hand in hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so then I ended up going right back there the next day and handing out more flyers for more events that mm -hmm. we got coming up. Um, so hopefully they can attend, man. It was really cool. Um, but going into Friday night, we kicked it off with our you know annual karaoke event. Always a great way to bring people from all the different um, campuses together, have a good time. Some show off their talents. Some mm. just come to network. Some just come to, you know, you know, disconnect from work, right? It's a Friday. You get to finally meet with people. It's cool. I got to know. What's your go-to karaoke song, my brother? Oh, Good Life. Anybody who knows me knows that that's a song that I always usually go to, but this Friday, I actually mixed it up, man. I actually went with, um, yeah. I went with, I went with Poison, bro. I did, I did, I did Poison. Not you know what I'm saying? So it's a mixture of singing and rapping. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, poison, you kind of got to get a little sexy for him. You didn't, did you do it? Did you unbutton the top? The top one? Let the taco meet up? Bro, my Love wife it. on here. You crazy. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, talk keep, after the crew show. Neck, crew neck, crew neck, <laughs> crew neck. on a Friday. Crew neck on a Friday. No buttons, baby. No buttons. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that after the show. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. It, was a, it, was, it was a cool vibe. You know what I'm saying? Probably did a quick little, you know, little two step dance. That was, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, just wrong. to keep yeah, the vibe. Man. Keep the vibe keep going, going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Splash, splash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nah, yeah. But it was cool. Leadership came through. So it was good for like some of the new employees that joined or the employees that don't really get to connect with them all the time. So really good vibes, man. Really good vibes. One of the young ladies is actually leaving to another institution. Very sad because she is mm -hmm. just one of the brightest leaders that we have within the system. Um, so it's always tough to see people go. I hate when a pillar finds new foundation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. when you like if it's one of the, you know, the oh we made it for six months, it's like, listen, bro, we was we was we was taking bets. You lasted longer than we thought, man. Ha have fun. Good luck. You know what I mean? But when yeah. somebody has been there, like before you start at least, you like, damn, how, yeah. I'm how I'm gonna who I'm gonna ask these questions to. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, I hate to see those people go, but growth is growth, man, no matter which way it goes. Yeah, man. Um, but the events kept coming this weekend, man. Saturday. Uh, as we announced last week, man, little man turned 12 years old. So Saturday, we officially went out to American Dream. Unfortunately, their water park is under renovation. So we went to their Nickelodeon amusement park, which is actually a pretty good surprise, man. Never yeah. been there before. No. Um, real, nah, real open. You know, that you, you've been there before? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. So you know, it's just real open. You just kind of once you got your band, you walk in and yeah, yeah. do do what you please. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Um, out there. yeah. So we got there early enough where there was like really no lines. So this guy, he's a thrill seeker. The first thing he wants to do is get on the craziest ride they got. So I'm like, you know what? I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. want to get on that ride? I'm getting on that ride with you. We start out on the shredder, Kenny. Um, mm -hmm. we start out on the shredder and. You know, at first I really underestimated this. I'm like, we're in an amusement park. How crazy are these roller coasters really going to be, right? Like, this, this is nuts. You think of Nickelodeon know. kid theme, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it's me getting up there in age or me just really underestimating this or the gin and tonics from the night before kicking in. But <laughs> once this ride starts going, I'm just like, oh, this is different. <laughs> so... I'm looking at his face. He's looking at me. I'm like, I got no security for you. Like this, <laughs> we both. I'm scared too, but I can't tell you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm just doing like, oh shit. You know what I mean? That's but funny. It was it was hilarious. It was it was great to um do that with him, be there with him. You know, of course, you know, all, all the cousins came, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, shout out to everybody that came through. And there's one ride that I have to talk about, brother. There's one ride I have to talk about, and I believe we have video footage on it. Oh, okay. Let me just tell y'all something. There's very few rides that can shake me up. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? But this ride, 
I got on it thinking it was really just one of those rides that, you know, they kind of just take you from one side to the other. You know what I mean? Like, you remember that old pirate ship ride in Coney Island? Yeah. Where just, yeah. yeah, yeah. So here you can see, man, it's just at first, everything looks real, real chill, right? Yeah. Real chill. You don't think nothing is going to be bad about this ride, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So we can actually, I don't know if we can fast forward on here or if it just has to play. There we go. So oh, now you see this, this, this light work. Seems, seems casual. Seems low key. Not yeah. crazy. Not, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is light work. Um, this is about the part, Kenny, where I start to see that this shit is about to escalate, right? Like we, we start in the dangle <laughs> over the edges. You said, yo, the people are under us. <laughs> fences, right? You know what I'm saying? Now, mind yeah. you. At this point, this is where the gin and tonics are starting to oh, say, who the fuck do you, you think you are? Oh, you got some height on there. Okay. Start to get some height, bro. Start uh, to get some height. Oh, bro. Oh. Now, this year. Now, so I'm going to show you. There's a you part. Didn't, you, you, didn't, you didn't scope out the ride before before you got on, did you? No. Uh, no. I, I'll tell you. This, this right here. You see that shit? Uh, you see that? Uh, out of the for everybody. Kids, <laughs> babies, whoever. <laughs> Catching this gin and tonic yesterday. Yo, oh, the no. Thing, the first thing God. I'm thinking about here is oh, no. my phone. My oh, phone. I'm like, shit. what is going That shit's in my pocket. Oh, I'm like, yo. Shit. What oh, if that shit falls shit. out? You know what I mean? I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about how's my life insurance policy? Yeah. You know what I mean? So did I make there this last one payment? Like <laughs> yo, there was one part when you see it first start yeah, to shit. make that hold at the top. That you heard somebody just scream like, "No, this is bullshit!" Uh, wait, that, that was that wasn't you screaming, right? Nah, it wasn't me. Right, it wasn't right. me. Okay. If it was, it would have been I. I sure as hell was like, "What the fuck!" Like, I definitely oh, didn't shit. let out one of those. That's oh my funny. god, bro! Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, man, these rides, these kids' rides, man. They, they, you can't underestimate the beast, man. Um, they will, they will bring the the bitch out of you. When shit goes yeah. up, <laughs> you know you're trying to be tough for the kids and shit, but you, you're, the person inside you is crying inside, yelling for help. Yeah, man, um, those are good rides. Those are good rides. Forty oh, years, man. man. Shout forty years. Darius. Yeah, forty years in Brooklyn, bro. And I was up there like, this is how it ends. This, this is how it is, man. <laughs> forty years through the concrete jungle of Brooklyn, it ends in the Nickelodeon amusement park. In Jersey. That's how I thought it was going to go out, man. Oh, man. Tragedy tonight in East Rutherford. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, Seriously. man. Shout out to Darius, man. Big birthday. Big birthday vibes, man. Sorry I couldn't make an unfortunately bullshit work shit. But I was able to send a representative. The cool, I sent the cool people in the family, so I figured it was okay. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Help, they definitely out. held it down. That's what's up. Appreciate them. Um, for sure. For sure. Uh, uh, speaking um, of birthday shout outs, I'll be remiss not to say one of the best. Not one of the best. Like, I felt like I've had many. My best personal mother-in-law, Mrs. Mrs. P, man. Happy birthday to you. Um, <laughs> big birthday shout out. Uh, she's awesome. But um, celebrate Absolutely. another year of life. Uh, shouts to her. Champagne, cake, all that good shit. She deserves it as always. But, no doubt. Um, no doubt. Yeah, man. Uh, September's packed, man. We got somebody else coming up too, man. I don't know, I don't know if she's ready for it or she want to wait. Oh, let me make sure the age will catch up to her. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? We appreciate her too, as always. Yes, yes, yes. Wifey's birthday is coming up, man. Um... Listen, my heart, my ride or die, uh, you know, I mean, I owe a lot to her. Uh, huge support system. Man, listen, you know, another celebration. And my bank account is against the ropes, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> against the ropes. <laughs> Looking like Anthony Joshua out here yeah, real quick. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, uh, what was that? Uh, I forgot the lady's name. Uh, at the USC the other week, the Spheres fight, when her dash... On the biggest Ooh, screen in the world. On yeah, the biggest yeah. screen. That's how the, that's how the account feel this week, right? <laughs> that's accurate. Super accurate, man. It's, I don't even want to uh, look at it. I don't even want to look at it. Like, unless please, it's a please, fraud please. alert, I'm not looking at it. <laughs> it doesn't mm, make sense. Nope. nope. Not at all. Not at oh, all. Yeah, man. Um, it's my brother. <laughs> Shoot. Talk about it. Um, so before you became Mr. Nelson, right? You know <laughs> what I mean? And before you found your, your soulmate, say mm -hmm. you went out on a date with a female and y'all are out catching a cool vibe. You know what I'm saying? Y'all end up, you know, at a bar and she orders a drink mm -hmm. and you see her proceed to put a roofie protector over her cup. How do you feel roofie. at this moment? 
Like just throwing a napkin over the fish. You went to the bathroom or something or? No, bro. There's literally a roofy protector joint where it just has room for the straw at the top of the glass. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have to ask about your past experience to make you feel like this is warranted right now. Like, um, like have you been have you been led astray? That's that has a man take you to this very bar and you're woken <laughs> up somewhere that you don't remember? Like I, I would I would need I would need more uh more more detail as so I mean you carry that in your purse, like you just oh is it I'm like, am I giving up a roofie vibe? Like I got so many mm -hmm. questions, so many questions. Yeah, so many questions. I agree. I think I, I, I would interrogate immediately, immediately. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, listen, I think if if one thing, um, hmm, I think if I was not the best um, conversation starter, this would be uh -huh. awesome for me. Because oh, to for your sure. point, now I, I have a whole angle. You know, I can be like same thing you said, right? Like so. You want to talk about that, or are we just gonna go about this like you ain't just slide that over your glass real quick? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like if, I, if she slid that over her cup, I might slide her the bill the other day. Like, yeah, it's like, oh. <laughs> like what's this about? <laughs> what's that about? <laughs> like, right. If you want to talk, I can talk too. Like, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, yeah, I would, I would assume she's been through a had a terrible night experience. Um, I assume you only get to that moment after a terrible night, unfortunately. I'd probably ask her if she has an extra one because I just mm -hmm. want us both to feel protected too. You know, I don't want to walk uh -huh. away from my uh -huh. drink and then, you know, uh -huh. I'm here thinking, oh, de okay, she feels protected. We're good. I walk away. She roofies me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now I'm somewhere I don't need to be. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, forgive me, bro. I've been watching Mind Hunters on Netflix with my wife. Bro, don't, I don't trust don't. the mother no more. You know what you I mean? You like, don't want to be a victim either. You don't want to be a victim. You know? You, <laughs> you know, know what I'm saying? saying? Like, oh, you know, I'm somebody's shit. son too. I, I, I just want, I want to feel protected. Um, um, I probably got um, other questions too, man. I, like, does she have it in different colors? You know or, what I mean? Does she, you know, like the different designs? Maybe, maybe this is a business that she can get into. I, I this um, was my first time hearing about it. So it's it, separate. Um, I'm surprised bars don't sell it. Uh, as far as, uh, hey, would you like a cover for your drink? You know what I mean? Just, uh, just for personal, like, just as a bar. You know what I mean? Uh, get an extra dollar on your tip. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, if you got it in your purse though, like I might look at you with Jezebel eyes. It's like I don't know, man. Yeah, look like you've been down to the block a couple of times, and I'm not a frequent flyer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just ask yeah. you to check now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, right. Listen, <laughs> we about to we about to throw the FCP logo on these joints. Oh yeah, start cashing yeah. in, bro. <laughs> Protect your cups. <laughs> Protect your cups. That's it, man. That's it. <laughs> yeah, man. Let let man. us know if this is a thing. If you are a business owner. To Kenny's point, are you slinging these at the front door when women walk in and say, protect yourself, girl. These these dudes, they yeah. crazy. Because we want to yeah. know if you, you know, if before you, you was with your queen, right? When you was out there just doing your thing, you had a, you on a date. And y'all, you thinking it's a cool vibe. She, he, he, hi, and with you. And she put mm -hmm. that roofy cover right over her glass. Like, excuse me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm Izell's son. Oh yeah, my you know God, Maria's like, son, huh? Dude, like, what you trying to The nerve. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse, like the nerve. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, man. But, um, like, speaking of, you know, covering your drink, if a female is feeling like, um, not like a victim, but, you know, trying to avoid being one, I guess she may, as a woman's standpoint, men may always be the aggressor, so to speak, mm. in this conversation where the man is usually the one giving said roofie or slipping said roofie. Um, mm. As far as relationships go, Men might also be the aggressor when it comes to the bedroom, where we are. May, well, we may be the one that initiate the situation going to let's say uh, third base, right? Mm. How long do you think you can hold yourself from going to second or third base before the partner brings up, "Hey, we need to go to second and third base"? Would it be a, would it be at a standstill? Would it? Oh, how many? How long do you think it would last if you said, "No, nah, I ain't going to second base. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna chill out. I'm gonna see if you go to second base this time." How long? You think, how many days you think that would happen before the other goes to second base? Because you know, you know, we always the you know, what I mean, the hit the light guy. Like you know, what I'm saying that's like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? like yeah. how long would it take if the roles are reversed? You think? Uh, for a score, uh, <laughs> many, many, many years ago. <laughs> many um, <moons. laughs> I, I was told I was a little too patient, um, mm. you know, a little too conservative in my approach. And I say that to say, 
I think most of the time they made the first move to second base. Just I was probably too respectful. You know okay, what I mean? Because okay. I always had this that's, fear that's, that's, of just ending up in, in cuffs. Like, you know what yes, I mean? Being a little yes. too aggressive. I didn't want to be that guy. So, yeah. yeah. Never want to never want to get reverse diddy out here. So you got to be respectful. You got to make sure everybody's on, on even kill, same page, look me in my eyes type shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> say it again just to make sure. Say it into my phone, please. Thanks for recording this. Um, Okay. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah, All right. yeah. No, 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 no slippery situations. Absolutely. Right. Now, now, hey, that was a past life. You know what I'm saying? That was, you know, pre life, pre now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, you play, if you used to play that game currently, what do you think the the holdout day would be? Two days, three days, five days, six weeks? <laughs> you know, the sad thing in today's climate, I'd probably still be super respectful, but you don't even have to really wait to do anything like they mm-hmm. out the gate people are meeting just to get busy you know what i'm saying get busy that, that shows that, how old i am people are meeting just to get it in now so i don't think i'd have to wait much and just kind of be like uh my name is buck and you know like I, uh, I don't know like that's that's what it looks like and i had a whole bar ready for buck but whatever <laughs> you know what i'm here for like, you know what i mean but um Okay. All right. You gotta be yeah. gotta gotta stay respectful. I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, I'm not I'm not playing that game personally in my personal life, but it has been a day or two where it's just like oh you know just you know life shit busy shit you know what I'm saying. But it's like if I don't initiate, when will they initiate? So now I'm curious. Now I'm playing the game. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm like, if I don't bring it up, brother, you dropped in the gems tonight. Go ahead, man. Listen, Keep listen, 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 man. Listen, man. Listen, hey, man. As, as soon as it clicked in my head, the text came through me and said, "Hey, man, what's going on?" And I was like, "You know what? You're right. I, I'm bugging. <laughs> you, you're absolutely right. I was doing stupid shit. You know what I mean? I was just, I was like, ha ha. Like, you know, I forgot you the prize. I'm just out here. You know what I mean? Just, I just know how to undo these bows real nice. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah, man." Yeah, yeah, man, I had, to, I, I had to drop the old draws, man. But you know how it go, man. It is what it is. <laughs> you know how it go, man. Drop the draws. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had, I had to put my sexy on, you know. What it is, yeah, man. yeah. So, uh, hey, man, I, I love this topic, man. I, mm-hmm. We might have to throw the whole docket out. I love where we at right now. All right. We, we, all, start. we, we all start on the Tuesday. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think, I, and I feel for those who can't feel the energy, like, I've been mm. in a situation where I've seen like one person clearly sending the signs and I'm looking at the other one like, yeah, my bad about to ask some fun. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, this nigga don't get the, he don't get it. He can't take a hit. <laughs> Bro, like, you, you missing, you missing all the signals. You know what I mean? Like, get a new helmet, baby. Like, mm-hmm. you missing mm-hmm. all the signals right now. Like, what's going on? Like, she clearly is into you. You need uh-huh. to go for that. Yeah. Like, oh no, we friends. Like, oh man, what's wrong with the youth so, these days? <laughs> so, and that it's like, and that right there is gonna keep you in the friend zone, my brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but you know what is funny? Similar to what you was just saying before, you was being mm-hmm. respectful. You was not, yeah. not you was be, not that you was being timid, but it's like, hey man, niggas catch cases, so let's like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like you don't you don't want to be a statistic neither. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, I was flirting, but. I ain't mean all that. It's like you know what? You're right. You didn't. I should have yeah. asked seven times. I should ask. I should have asked seven times. <laughs> the first six. The first six was a little shaky. I should have asked the seven time. That was my fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can't ne- can never be too sure, man. Yeah, I remember one time, like a, a good friend of mine. <laughs> I, you you ever been around one of those people that you've never seen them flirt? So you just kind of ask them, "Do you know how to flirt?" You know, so like he, you've always seen them. This- this ain't you, bro. <laughs> yeah, like you've seen them single forever. It's like, do you know how to talk to the, to the opposite side? Like, is that a thing? And, 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 and you know, it's it's always interesting to me. You know what I mean? Because you let my wife tell the story. You know, and everything I say sometimes is is smooth. And I, mm-hmm. I you know, what I'm saying I can't help that. I'm a lead, but I, I digress from the point. Me, you know what I mean? Me, <laughs> don't mind me. Don't mind me. <laughs> Well, I digress from the point. Um, but it's it's always interesting when I've never seen somebody in a in, not intimate, but in a relationship, just to see how they are in that light. Like, mm. like when, mm. like when's the last time you do it? The year of the rat? Like I don't know, man. Right, right. What are you doing? <laughs> like, um, I got another side question. Would you ever go out with your, you know, your, your wife, your partner, of course? And you know, why you can both out, you know. Full, you know, uh, on board, on page, to see if either one of you still got it by yourself, just to walk off and see if I can get this person's number. Like, would y'all ever oh, play that game? No. 
Too too close to the fire? Hell no. no yeah, no. We so, so baby, baby, I want to see if I still got it. I'll be right back. All right, all right. Nigga never came back. So what the fuck? This never mm-hmm. happened. Babe, the shit worked. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, but the shit worked. <laughs> like, I still got mm-hmm. it. I can't, we can't go out no more. <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, shit. you know why? Because I mean, she nah, it's it's not even a fair game. It's not a fair uh, game. You true. know what I'm saying? Because she walks outside just going to get milk and she probably gets hit on by like three, four guys. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know how much yeah. work I'm gonna have to put in, you know what I mean? Because it, it, from what I hear, uh females still really want to be approached. They want to be approached, mm. they want to, you know what I'm saying? They want to know what you're about. So mm. I, I haven't done that shit. Mm. Years, you I know, don't know how, I don't know I don't know how it works because I don't know what yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, hey, I'm in healthcare, uh, you got insurance? Like, I, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck I'm saying in her girl, you know what I mean? Like, but her, she just smiles and says, Can you pass me that? And forget about it. Homeboy smitten. Like, I, mm-hmm. I ain't playing that so, game. You need, you need to ride home tonight. It's like your fan, fan. <laughs> Ask for a straw, please. Uh, do oh, men get turned off when the woman makes the first move? So, you know what? I'll, Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say I might be very similar to what you just said right there. I might be the guy that don't know or can't don't don't know when it's happening. You know, I'm so in the friends. I like I'm in the friend zone by choice. Like you know, what I'm saying I don't. I'm not looking to get out of this friend zone. So I assume this is all mm-hmm. that what it is. So if that ever was to happen, I'll be like, ha <laughs> Like I would just act like it's a regular funny, funnier than normal comment. I wouldn't know if I mm-hmm. how to react. Um, I would say. No, unless they've had a bad experience, right? Um, I don't think, and I'll just speak for myself, right? I've never before I was, you know, in my in my marriage, I was never like, well, what the hell are you talking to me for? You know what I mean? But I would always be curious as to, you know, what's the alternative? Because at that time, like you had you had girls that were lining dudes up. So you never really knew like if she was really interested in you. She was trying to get you robbed. Like, it was a different mentality for me at that time. So it, there had to be, like, somebody to kind of co-sign you a bit uh, for, mm-hmm. for me to really think that it was something else. So I wouldn't say turned off, but very, very cautious okay. if, a, if a woman was um, hitting on me. Definitely. Right? It's weird. Like, I guess I guess it would be weird if their roles were reversed in that sense, because it's I guess it's rarer than other circumstances, yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. But uh, it's amazing would it a, how bold would it be a turn off though? Would it be a turn uh, off? Like you like, oh, you're too oh, no. out of here. Okay. Nah, just grab the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not <laughs> let's not play games. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't need to play games, all that kissing, all that. Mm. Right to right to the business. It's all good. All right, time out. If a, if a stranger, you know, attractive, <laughs> of course, female, of course, come up to you. Hey, hey, uh, I noticed you ordered this drink that I happen to order and go straight and grabs the package. Mm-hmm. Mid mid first intro, like they don't even know a name there. Grabs the package. Mm-hmm. That's this is all on board for you. You, you be rolling. If I'm two Hennessy's in, man, it, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's at this point, she's reading my mind. <laughs> at this point, she's reading my mind. Oh shit. Um, oh man, these are jokes, people. These are jokes. These are yeah, jokes. Uh, no, that's it's interest. It's always interesting to do the reverse uh, of the norms and gender roles to see how mm-hmm. people would react. Um, yeah, we pull over and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, and it's funny when you're in the passenger seat, right? That's never happened to me, like, for the first day. Like, could you imagine, done. like, yeah, like, it's like, you need to ride home. And it's like, nah, you know, I'm going to get on the bus. Like, no, nah, I'll get you a ride home. It's like, nah, I'm in the cab. I'm in the studio. Thumb move. I'll be out. <laughs> I'll find my way home. You know what I'm saying? And then you get in the car, she got her hand on your lap, <laughs> asking you if you had a good time. You it's start a, looking around. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, like, am I a catch? <laughs> am I the prize? Am I the prize I'm, tonight? I'm, oh, I'm shit. a passenger prince today. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man. That's oh, funny. Lord. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah, that, that'd be interesting. I think I, I think you'd probably be the first person I call to be like, yo, bro, I think I got passenger prints tonight. <laughs> oh shit. He said, did you drop the drawers? <laughs> he said, he's like, boy. <laughs> he said, I can't get the key in the hole fast enough. Like, yo. Oh shit. That's funny. That is funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, y'all engaged today. I love it. I love it. Um, 
But there's one person who's been a little too engaged in um, some news and allegations that he probably uh -huh. shouldn't be, man. Uh, we're talking about Meek Mill. Um, <sighs> you know, for anybody who's paying attention to media right now, you know, Diddy's going through it with a lot of allegations around um, um, sex trafficking and just just a lot a lot of stuff yeah. in the news, man. Um, but Meek Mill is is being tied to this, um, you know, just from his dealings with Diddy in the past and. He sent out a tweet talking about he's got a honey K for an investigator to find out how he's connected to these allegations. Kenny, um, what, what do you think Meek should be doing at this moment? He need to go keep chasing his fucking dream, man. This ain't it. <laughs> I'm saying like, yo, if you are a dream chaser, my man, get back in the book and go chase that fucking dream, my man. They, like, I don't know how he keeps getting his phone back from these social media accounts, but he needs to stop having access to his own tweets. Cause you can tell when it's really him. Be like every time he read a tweet from him, I'm like, this nigga still got his phone. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every time I see this shit, and I don't get it. But um, I'm not sure why he's curious to know why his name is in whatever allegations when there's documents of you in the pool and you and Puff calling each other daddy and chill and brother love and all that shit. Yeah, it don't look good. And if I'm not mistaken, that might have been the same outfit from the fry, French fries on your lap situation. So I don't, I don't know where you at when this all goes down, bro. It looks very skeptical. I'm pretty sure nothing happened. Shit, I pray to God nothing happened. Dreams and nightmares mm -hmm. was a classic. But all that aside, man, just shut the fuck up. Let that, let the prosecution do what the prosecution do to the person that's, that's on it. trial. This got nothing that's until it. you get a subpoena. God, and I pray to God he don't get a subpoena because I would hate to have to have him have to say the truth on the stand. Yeah. Oh God, God damn it! Talk about damage control. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, he just gotta learn to shut the fuck up. It's got nothing to do with him, man. Nothing. I yeah. agree. I agree, <laughs> man. Um, the best times of Meek's life has been when he has not been heavy on social media. Yes. That should tell him everything he needs to know. Follow the trend, bro. Follow the trend. When you don't tweet, things go smooth in your life. Nobody has no idea what you're involved with. They don't have no idea what you think about. Go back to that. Just go back. Facts. Facts. <laughs> yeah, man. Facts. Absolutely. Um, all right. So I got another question for you. And Wifey calls you up, man. She's like, Kenny, huh? are you hungry? You know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah. yeah. You no, know, of course. I could eat. She says, all right, I'll bring you something to eat. She hangs up. What's your first thought? No inquiry? No follow-up? What? Oh, right. my God. Um, <laughs> you know what? Knowing my wife, if she didn't ask if I was if she asked if I was hungry, but then ask what food I wanted, I got a feeling she's coming home with no bags. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna have me eat some shit that is not on the menu at no other restaurant in that four mile radius. I mean, like this is not the food I was talking about. But now that we're here, that was cool. But I'm still hungry. Like you know, so, <laughs> I mean, like, um, yeah, I would I would I would take it as a as a as a weird joke. It's a weird joke if there's no inquiry. Oh, what I mean, like that's crazy. Like, has this, has this ever happened? Has this happened to you? Um, no, but I got okay. sent something interesting from the wife, so that's why I wanted to bring it um to everybody here. So now, your wife shows up, right? So now you're curious, right? You just hung up okay. the phone. I, I want you know you want to know what she got, right? She proceeds. You see a bag, but mm -hmm. you know there's no distinct you know emblem on it, where it's from, or anything. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, she proceeds to take out materials to make a meal we gotta cook oh. <laughs> so, that's, like, no, that's no, no. here's the kicker you gotta cook <clears throat> oh not only you're not helping me you're giving me chores yep she Damn. she brings all she puts she brings out all the materials she's like yo you said you was hungry here you go i got all this stuff for you to make listen, let's see listen no disrespect, I'm packing all of this back up. It's going right in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going around the corner to Cam Man where they know how to cheat a nigga. <laughs> I'm saying you out here disrespecting me this time of night, man. Nah, nah, nah. We're gonna cook that tomorrow or some other day. <laughs> when I got when I, you know what I mean, when I'm when I'm ready for it to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not doing it. I ain't doing it. <laughs> nope. Nope. Nah, so so here's the thing now, right? There's more to this. She says. But we need to start eating healthy and we can't keep getting fast food. So this is her way of making sure that y'all eat healthy by having you cook this healthy food. Are you still Damn. packing it up? 
And shouts to Orlando Diet starts Monday. I hear you, baby. We here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna hey, we're gonna t- we're gonna table this meal for another time and date. But come next Monday, <laughs> we can get this going for real. Get some get a weekend in. Get some real dedication. Some real meal prep and planning in. Go get some new Tupperware. Make make it make it official. Throw out all the old Tupperware and shit. All the go to work stuff. Yeah. Well, um. We'll 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 make this a plan come next week. But right now on the spot, no, no heads up. Mm-hmm. No, you can't you can't surprise the health on me. I'm not I'm not down with that. I was expecting some French fries. Right. I'm sorry, you fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now you got mad trauma every time she call you and say you hungry. <laughs> every time, every time it's like, nah, I just I had a big lunch, man. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I mean. Since we were talking about like interesting situations with dating, uh, interesting mm-hmm. research has come out about dating in New York, okay. and this is courtesy of the Fetish Finder researchers. Uh, this is a sexual fixation site who did some research and said that New York has the highest population of single individuals and is the worst city for dating. Before we even get into this, I got to ask you, how'd you end up on that site, my brother? I didn't end. I, so, see, this is, this is, uh, now I sound like Biden, right? I'm just asking. This popped up people, on my people, feed. People want to know. People want to know. <laughs> <laughs> this popped up on my feed. You know what I mean? And it was like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? So then. <laughs> oh, man. This is spicy. <laughs> I bet I bet it was my boy. I bet it was. <laughs> Nigga said add subscription name right here. <laughs> One ninety nine a month. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Sign me up, Scotty. Oh man, mm. but um, but New York is the worst city to date. Um, I could I could see I could hear that I could feel that maybe. Um, just due to expectations, perhaps. Um, and honestly, it might be hard just to find a place to go. There's so many. Awesome places to eat out here in the city. Uh, so many uh, um, attractions and things you could do, whether it be a Broadway play, whether it be a, a dope ice cream spot. And if you don't devour power at all, there's always some new shit you could go find and eat that is wild and interesting <laughs> for no reason. Me, you know, me, and, me, and, me and the wife send shit back. Yo, we got to go here. Yo, we got to go here. Yo, we got to go here. <laughs> About 90 spots deep. We, I think we've been to like two of them. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But... um. Yeah, for new people meeting, like trying to do new things, it could be tough, man. It could be super mm-hmm. tough. Um, so keeping it New York City, man, and you know, we kind of went into um <clears throat> the administration in the city being under severe scrutiny due to an FBI investigation. Uh, mm-hmm. and it looks like another administrator is going to fall victim to this. New York public, New York City Public School Chancellor David Banks is expected to step down soon. <clears throat> He's led the country's largest school system for nearly three years. And it says he intends to step down from his position before the end of the year. Uh, he would join a handful of top city officials to leave their posts in recent weeks. Earlier this month, uh, and I think Kenny talked about this last week or the week before, NYPD Commissioner Edward Caban and Chief Legal Counsel Lisa Zornberg announced their resignations. And then on Monday, Commissioner of New York City's Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, Ashwin Vassan, announced his resignation. Kenny, man, um, how you, how you, how you, how you feeling about this, brother? Listen, a lot of people connected with Nino Brown, a.k.a. Uh, Mr. Adams, man. <laughs> uh, a lot of them are making these early departures early. They're like, yo, man. Might have had a text or two that might have that might look funny in a weird light. Let me just get let me just get ahead of this. Get out of yep. here. Like I don't think he was doing anything crazy. He's in charge of public schools. I don't not that there's no corruption there. Mm-hmm. But hey, funds do got to get allocated somewhere. If funds are missing from someplace, mm-hmm. somebody has to answer to that, and his name is going to be at the top of that list. So um, yeah. him putting in the resignation paperwork a little earlier for the end of the year. Hey, maybe hey maybe his his retirement years are up, and it's time, and he can do it. But it's terrible timing. As far hmm. as the city, you know, the whole city uh, scandal situation with Mayor mm-hmm. Adams slash AKA Nino. Um, I don't know. Uh, I assume all will come to the light. Like Cat Williams said back in January, February, it's been a real year. A lot of shit's been coming up that I didn't want to hear about. 
Um, yeah. This is more shit. I don't shit. My kids are in public school. I didn't want to hear about none of this shit. But um, yeah, it's yeah, crazy because he was just at the Hope in Harlem conference I was at two weeks ago. Oh, that's right. That's um, right. Really good speaker. Really looked like he was, you know, there dedicated to the work. And you know, they they um they actually took some what is it some words from him on Pix Eleven News where he said, you know. He's always lived his life with integrity every day, and this is not going to take away from the work that he's done. Uh, supposedly, he's fully cooperating with everything. Uh, EI actually raided the Harlem home of banks, uh, which he shares with First Deputy Mayor Sheena Wright, and seized their cell phones from the property. So, ooh, who knows what's going to come out of this? Man. Diddy party participants. Ooh. Yo, yo. <laughs> Yeah, between the mayor and Diddy, New York is in shambles right now. If you ain't, if you wasn't in bed with this dude, you was definitely in bed with that dude in the past twenty years. <laughs> yeah, man, a lot of hands were shaked, a lot of pictures were taken. I mean, a lot of parties had doors that closed behind you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying so. Oh uh, man, oh mm-hmm. man, that oh mm-hmm. that 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 Diddy tree is gonna be a far fall from the from the trunk from the from the stump. Um, mm-hmm. All right, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that though. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, and then really just uh, kind of ended it off, bringing it back over to Brooklyn. I believe a couple months ago, we brought to the show that SUNY Downstate um, was up for closure uh, by Kathy Hochul, stating that the institution pretty much was just in a bad financial state. And then we also updated you that there were recommendations from the committee advisory board to extend the opening of SUNY Downstate. Now, just to give some history on this, why is this important? Well, SUNY Downstate serves a very underrepresented community in East Flatbush, and the only other healthcare institution that really exists in that area is Kings County. Now, if anybody knows anything about Kings County, it's it's mostly known for its trauma. Like, they are very good at handling trauma incidents. And I know I'm going to have some physician colleagues who disagree with me about how good Kings County is, but you can ask East Flatbush residents how they feel about walking into their emergency rooms. It's really tough to go through there. So SUNY Downstate has served as that urgent care right across the street that can treat you real quick. If you got asthma, you probably fell, bumped your elbow. You know what I mean? It's, it's just been a real good service to the community. So it looks like lawmakers are pressuring the state to convene SUNY Downstate Advisory Board as the deadline nears. Uh, they actually just extended this, right? Um, so the clock's tick in for a state-appointed advisory board to develop a plan that could determine the future of SUNY Downstate, uh, the city's only state-run hospital. So this is really important when we look at, um, you know, the type of insurances that they take, the service that they provide for people. Uh, do we want that entire population now to just shift over to Kings County? What's the plan? Are they going to open another more profitable urgent care in that area? That's probably a, um, an extension of Kings County. Who knows? So more to come on that. But, you know, for my East Flatbush heads, um, just really pay attention to this. Uh, because if you frequent that downstate um, service, just like a lot of people, I know I go there. Uh, this is important. Um, SUNY Downstate. Yeah, they... yeah, deadline's approaching, like you said, bro. Yeah, um, I do want to give a quick shout out though over uh, to my <laughs> on the politics side of thing. I know we don't speak politics often, but um, this one lady did catch my my uh, feed last a few days ago. Um, Miss Representative and Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett. Uh, she's a Democrat who represents Texas, but she also serves on the House Oversight Committee. But um, she had there was a I guess a town hall kind of setup slash meeting where they were discussing the Biden Harris uh, policies. And um, she was going in on the Project 2025 and how it relates to Trump. And she was serving people who was uh, on the other side, on the opposing side. Of no, he's not. You know, he's not involved. What he said was true. And she's just pouring receipt out after receipt out after receipt out. And then she's doing it with the head swipe. I'm like, oh, this, oh, she got sass. I love this shit. But um, yeah. quick shout out to her. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, the people need to know the truth in any way, shape, form, or passion they could get it, and she's not there to deliver it. So I just want to give a quick shout-out to her. She's doing the damn thing. Yeah, man. Jasmine Crockett is the ultimate fact-check queen. Mm-hmm. She will check you very quickly, like you said, with receipts, with history, 
with clear words. And I dare you to try and say anything disrespectful to that woman. She's checked people on the floor in yeah. front of everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought that to the show, bro. She'll check. I think she'll check you on the street corner too, but I'm happy she keeps it. She keeps it professional. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Oh man, over in the entertainment though, a lot of uh, weird things have been happening this week. Uh, for those uh, fan of hip hop, of course, uh, the Young Dolph murder trial is underway at the moment. And um, long story short, everybody involved is snitching, and uh, they're mainly snitching because everybody else involved has been clipped or has expired some way or fashion. And they have gone to police at this point for protection of themselves. And yeah, we fucked up. We you know we fucked up against something that was so crazy, but we need y'all help. But in order for y'all to need help from them, they got to give them something. So everybody seems to be uh, snitching on one each other, one another. Uh, it seems Joe Guy's brother might have been tied to the hit as far as money was concerned. The killers they had a fee in place. The fee didn't show up. There's nasty work out there, but um, those that were involved, if they're not already uh, expired, will be going to jail pretty soon. Um, but yeah, that trial is underway, and it's not, and it, not that it's not looking good, but I think it's looking where it's supposed to be looking for those involved. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they'll meet the, the they'll get the proper judgment when that day comes. But um, that's coming and going. Yeah, man. Um, so other uh, you know local news back to Brooklyn. Uh, the Diddy update. Uh, he is currently on suicide watch for those in the, in the know, those not in the know. Um, he's refusing to eat over at Brooklyn MCU. And um, yeah, I would be refusing to eat too if every meal I've asked for or wanted over the last 25 or 30 years or something I and then a chef prepared for me that I told him to make. You know what I'm saying? Um, them showing up to his door with whatever they may feed everyone else may be below his standard, but he may just be in a place where it is he is he is just not familiar with and mm-hmm. uh, him being on suicide watch and in the room next to Epstein was bro bro <laughs> I'm, just waiting, bro, I'm, just waiting, I'm just waiting for the news feed cameras are down yeah cameras are down bro the denying of the bill is what made me nervous like yeah. where, where where did he going like his family's here his kids like I, the minute they denied the bill I believe twice I got yeah, nervous and I, I could be overthinking it. People think I am, but I am I am nervous here, bro. I'm nervous. I think it's the it's the witness tampering on past situations, man. They can't let you out because you are a risk. You are not only a risk to um others involved with the case, but um you are a risk to, to, to a lot of other people as well that aren't involved with this case. So we can't let you just, you know, be all free willy-nilly. And look, and honestly, not I don't hey, I don't know Sean Combs. Just party to his music, unfortunately, for fucking decades. But um, if he was facing the time that he is facing, and they did give him that bail, I wouldn't be surprised if he fleed. If he had a private jet, and I cut off the ankle monitor, and just disappeared. Yo, come and get me from Bali, bro. I'm sorry, <laughs> I got the. Mm-hmm. If I had, the, if I had the money disappeared, I know I did some fuck shit. Come and get me. Then we can have this conversation later. You know what I'm saying? But um, the fact that they didn't even give him that right. Or that opportunity to fake leave, it just it just shows how much they got against you, bro. And it's, it's, it's a sad story for him. Yeah, man. I, I think if 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 Flea, if he if this was really that bad, and this is purely spe- speculation, he'd have fleed a long time ago. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I totally get what you're saying. I just you know like I'm nervous. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. Oh, but, if if uh, that's if that's, that's it. Then good, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. If that's all it is, then all right, fine. I mean, it sucks it had to be him, yeah. but I don't know. As far as nervous, why are you nervous? Like, are you nervous as a black man uh, in, in, that, in a great area that is not going against uh, working in his favor, or for other reasons? I just feel like the, the I mean, denying the bill, honestly, with the allegations, you know what I'm saying. I mean, is he a flight risk? Take his passport. You know what I mean? Like, there's things you could try to do to keep him here and mm-hmm. while you put whatever case you got together. So maybe I'm missing something in the reports mm-hmm. for why this bill is being denied, but it just seems like it's it's, it's a bit much at the moment. Yeah, man. Yeah, but, um, yeah, man. Um, a lot of uh, uh, lawyer news feeds and everybody else, they all saying, listen, the amount of evidence that they got to get you as far as the tapes and 
Uh, don't, get me, don't get me wrong. Cassie's report by itself was one thing, but Cassie's report with the video that dropped like a month or two after the fact that was side by side with the report and detail for detail mm-hmm. makes everything in her report now credible. You know what I'm saying? So if that came and went, you paid that money up, hoping that that would go away to some capacity. It is what it is, but yeah, like I say, he's Hugh Hefner with the with the hip hop pass, and he fucked up. Mm. <laughs> he fucked up big. Um, but even if you see it, when when the boss um, or the manager is doing fuck shit, you as an employee or someone that needs that paycheck from them to keep your own sustainability going. Like, do you ever, when do you chime in? Like, yo, fam, I think we should stop. Like, does that mm. ever, like, like, no one said that ever to him? Like, ever? 20 years? Like, Jada couldn't have been the only person to say kick his back in. Like, you know, like it had to be somebody they else, probably, right? They probably did, and it just, it didn't work out, right? Either they end up getting kicked out the circle or... They just probably exited quietly with a, you know, with an NDA and said, you know what I mean? Like, I won't say nothing, but I don't want to be a part of this no more because it's going to come crumbling down at some point. True. Yeah, yeah man, man. we'll see. We shall yeah. see. Tough business, tough business. Um, But I, I think the message online that I do love is do not let this distract you from what's important. Um, make sure you're paying attention to what is happening in the political climate. Make sure you're paying attention to what's happening <clears throat> in the financial climate. Um, the next six months to a year are going to be very telling, especially after we figure out who's going to lead our next administration. So while we have this conversation here, um, just remember this should not be at the top of your mindset when you wake up in the morning, your first feed you look for. Uh, please do not let these people fool you. There's bigger shit going on, and this shit is they're trying to mask it out there like it's it's something big that we need to pay attention to. Um, and we're gonna swing over to the ladies, man. WNBA Asia Wilson. Um she's really just continuing to cement her case for the GOAT of the WNBA. I know it's still early to kind of put those stamps on her. Um, but unanimously winning the MVP, uh, she joins Cynthia Cooper Dyke as the only as only the second WNBA player to do so. First player in WNBA history to lead the league in points, rebounds, and blocks in the same season. Gotcha. She's an amazing company with three MVPs: Cynthia Cooper once again, Lisa Leslie, and I believe another lady. I don't know her first name is Lauren. Um, which is really good company that she's in. Big cooking. Um, hey, I, I, I see no reason why she can't get this back to back to backer. You know what I mean? I see no point why they're not making it, why they won't make it happen. But um, just to Asia, she is the GOAT of it all. And um, hopefully she'll hand it off whenever she's ready to. But right now it's hers. It's hers to, it's hers to have. Big facts, big facts. Uh, but she showed once again why she is the MVP unanimously. Um, speak, speak, speaking of awards in the WNBA. Hey, I got to take you back to a few episodes. Rookie of the year, how you feel? Oh, man. Um, I think, of course, with the injury and the fact that Caitlin is balling out, I think she's going to win it. Um, I think she she's box office. You know, there's no doubt about it. She is box office. I I think Angel Reese is, is going, if she does a lot of good work over the offseason, you know, get a jump shot together, just really like focus in on what she wants to enhance, get healthy. Uh, she has a chance next year to come back and probably get most improved player. Facts, facts. I do agree with that. Um, yep. And then the next thing is just uh, the WNBA is expanding, and now Portland will become the 15th franchise to join the WNBA. They will begin play in 2026. Just a reminder that the Golden State Valkyries will be beginning will be beginning their season next year in 2025. So WNBA expanding means great things for all of those ladies who are looking for roster spots. It's a small league right now, so you either got to ball out or you got to wait or go overseas. So this just creates more opportunities for those young ladies looking to get into the WNBA. The injuries and uh, Kate McClark effect will definitely show improve the next two to three years as far as revenue coming in. And more revenue means more teams, like we were saying before. So the more eyes, the more money coming in, and we could get more teams, more uh, 
more supporters, more fans, more stadiums, more tickets sold. That's the That's big thing. It. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. They got to get these tickets. And uh, hey, instead of WNBA finds a way to get Caitlin Clark to play every game, they're going to, you know what I mean? Everybody else is going to have to work. <laughs> it's going to have to uh, do their part to help out. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a tough business, man. It's a tough business. But, um, you know, I think I think they got a good strategy behind what they're trying to do. I think, as, you know, as long as everybody stays focused and does what they have to do, it, it should work out, man. But, you know, who knows? Um, all right, man. So as we head over to, you know, some movies, TV shows and music recommendations real quick, um, some shows that are coming out. Mr. McMahon for my wrestling fans, uh, a documentary about Vince McMahon. I think one of the biggest sports moguls you young kids have probably never heard about. Um, it walks you through the story of his reign in the WWF before it became the WWE and probably even before it became the WWF, right? Um, so you definitely want to tune into that. That releases on Netflix. Um, the trailer for Starting Five is out. <laughs> This one is looking like it's going to be good. Um, be I good. believe it's DeMontis Sabonis, Jason Tatum, LeBron James. Um, oh, my God. I can't. Uh, Jimmy Butler. And I think I'm missing one person. Oh, Anthony Edwards. Just, yeah. I just hope they ask. I just really hope they ask Tatum. Hey, how'd you feel with the low minutes in the Olympics? Yo, everybody's everybody's <laughs> asking know. that question. Everybody, know. I think there's a sound bite out there right now with somebody asking him. This this is what I would do if I was um if I was Joe Mazzulla. I would get a reel of every game from the Olympics. I would get a reel that has every sound bite questioning around Jason Tatum not playing. And I would have that playing in the locker room every single game. And I would tell him, I want you to go out and play with that energy every single night. You should bring home MVP. You should bring home defensive play. You go out there and get any award that you think this NBA has and win another championship. Burr, burr. And, you know what I mean? And remind them who the hell they missed out on and not playing. Granted, they still won the Olympics. I mean, I think everybody kind of saw that coming. Yeah. But, I mean, they, yeah. Steve yeah. Kerr yeah, still that, can't answer that question. Facts. Then one of the Olympics def definitely diminished those questions, so to speak, you know what I mean? Because it's like, what I did work, you know what I mean? So it is what it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but for Jason Tatum winning the NBA championship, they winning the Olympic championship. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Not that there's nothing to play for next year, but other than getting better, but um, it is if you if you are looking for a chip on your shoulder, that is it. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yes, man. Yes. Um, but yeah, other than that, man. Um, the other show me and wifey checked out on Netflix was the perfect couple. Um, Nicole Kidman is still a very phenomenal actress, always putting out good movies. Um, and this one has a pretty interesting twist towards the end of it. Dakota Fanning is actually in it too. Oh, uh, and another. Yeah, and a lot of other recognizable um, actors and actresses you all probably know. So make sure you check that out on Netflix. Really cool show. Uh, what happened in those shows? Emperor at Ocean Park. That's mm. a good show so far. Um, it, it, deals okay. with him, it deals with Forrest Whitaker being um, a judge who passes away. And now his kids who he's raised to be magnificent people in some walk of life are trying to figure out if it was a True death or a murder, you know what I'm saying? But um, oh. it's, it's a pretty, it's a, it's a pretty good show. So far. I think the season's done, but I'm in the middle of a good show. Okay, all right. Sounds good. Sounds good, Thanks, man. Make sure um, y'all go check out um episode 91. Still out there, still thriving, man. Beyond business featuring Ramel Lee. A lot of really good gems in there, man. Um, and we appreciate y'all. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, comment, all that good stuff. And as Kenny mentioned in the beginning, the merch is up. FCP shop is a thing. Make sure you head over there, man. Get you some FCP gear. Sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the show where you are now released back into your regularly scheduled programming. Corporate life, parental life, entrepreneurship, whatever it is that you do, we salute you. I'm Senor Lee. Yeah, yeah, man. I'll see you next pay week where we lock back in to a free state of mind. Yeah.